Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope you are enjoying our Spark question series and Hadoop question series and other series that we have on our channel. So uh, today I'm back with one more video. Uh, it is about uh, improving Spark's performance. So I'm going to list down 10 ways uh, that can help you improve Spark's performance. Okay, let us start with this. Okay, first one is uh, using tree reduce instead of reduce by key. So uh, most of you might have heard about preferring reduce by key over group by key. That's a very common interview question we have also covered in our uh, uh, series. But there are very few people I have seen who know that they should prefer tree reduce or tree aggregate over reduce by key or uh, aggregate by key operation. Now let us understand what is the reason behind it. So whenever you do a reduce by key operation, all the output from executors goes to driver so that it can be merged and combined. So if you have huge number of partitions and you have huge number of uh, uh, machines at your disposal as executors, then the amount of load that is going to be on driver is huge because driver has to take care of combining the final output and uh, reducing the final output in, into a one and uh, it has been observed that the load on driver the time taken by driver to do this operation increases linearly as the number of partitions increase and as the size of the operation, uh, a size of the data handled in this operation increases. So it becomes a very difficult situation when your driver is loaded, you know, it becomes a performance bottleneck. So how can this problem be solved? This problem can be solved using tree reduce or tree aggregate function. So uh, tree aggregate or tree reduce is, uh, is doing the same thing that you are doing in uh, reducer but it is doing it in a uh, parallelized way. So what happens is that uh, you know reduce by key operation is generally associative and commutative right. So we are taking advantage of this situation here. So what we do here is that uh, output of executors rather than going to the driver directly they go to some other executor where they are partially combined again you know and then their output goes to driver so the amount of data that is traveling to the driver in the end is very less as compared to the amount of the data that was traveling to the driver in case of reduce by key operation so now you can control that how many hops you want to create between the executors and the driver so uh, the depth of the tree you can define here we have only one node one set of executors in between the driver and the main executor which actually did the task uh, so you can make it two make it three and based on that uh, uh, th that reduce a tree reduce function uh, the performance uh, will be better and uh, uh, you know based on that uh, your parallelization will also get will get impacted will it, it will improve so you should always use tree reduce or tree aggregate operation over reduce operation. Okay, next next is that whenever you are joining two tables and if one of the tables is smaller table, then please use broadcast join. It is it is very important. What broadcast join does is that it it copies your smaller uh, data frame or smaller RDD on all the worker nodes and uh, uh, you know your worker nodes can locally join the data uh, with the with the partitions that it has on its machine so it reduces lot of shuffle operation it reduces the amount of data that is traveling on the cluster because of shuffle, shuffle operation in join and you will see very drastic improvement in your uh, performance of your uh, uh, 
join so this is one very important aspect so for this you can control the value of uh, 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 you know you can force spark to do broadcast join for that you have to set a property in spark which mentions the threshold value for uh, uh, you know uh, if the if the size of the table is smaller than that threshold value then it will broadcast it always i will share the property name in my uh, description of this video okay so uh, we should whenever possible we should try to use spark 2.x so the reason for that is that there are a lot of optimizations uh, catalyst optimizer that is used as part of spark 2.x and if you are shuffling data you know there will be definitely in your application you will be using joins and all and you will be shuffling your data in that scenario spark encoders come into picture which has very small memory footprint uh, you know uh, which is uh, which I this take very less amount of memory and they're very fast to read so uh, the performance of your joins and shuffle operations is also very fast so e even if you're caching the data reading from the cache also uh, is faster if you're using spark 2.x because spark has defined spark encoders in the latest version which takes advantage of uh, a custom format to store data in your cache and to shuffle data in, in the same format in on the different executors so if you are not using spark 2.x then uh, instead of using java serialization please please use cryo serialization cryo serialization will give you far better performance uh, uh, you know uh, as compared to java java serialization is not uh, it, it is very object intensive you know you will see a lot of gc operation happening on your uh, cluster and you know a lot of time and uh, cluster capacity being wasted into that so it is always advisable to use cryo serializer instead of uh, java serializer in your spark application so uh, guys i'm going to make this video into parts i hope this part this is the first part i hope this part was helpful uh, in you know letting you know that what are the ways uh, you can improve your sparks performance uh, stay tu tuned for uh, next set of uh, videos on this this particular topic i'll be make i'll be either doing it in two parts or three parts i hope this video was useful thanks for watching my channel please subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends